more with stand for than anything else. There's a lot, a lot that you can do with ChatGPT and you probably spend days talking about it. And I'm still learning. I like teaching at this level because I'm closest to where you're at. Uh, and so I feel like we can kind of relate a little bit more and also we can kind of teach each other. I'm selfish in that way. I want to do it too. So it is going to be a sampler of a lot of things that you can do. Uh, but really the only way to get better is to just go in there and blame it. All right. So what is chat GPT? So ultimately, and this is true for a lot of these, uh, kind of AI models that are out there, like bar and everything. It's a, it's really trained on, trained on a large number of tech data. And it's usually up to a certain date. Um, specifically, it's for ChatGPT. It is up to a certain date. Uh, it is capable. Uh, it's kind of like a college freshman. It's not. It can be really, really smart, but it can't be its own director of operations. It can't be its own CFO, right? It needs supervision. So it's like a fellow or an intern. And then the way you interact with it is what is called prompting. How many of you are familiar with prompting? Okay, we're good there. Awesome. So how many of you have used BARD? Okay. How many of you have you how many of you have used Bing? Okay, one, two. And then ChatGPT, we already got that. In there, right. Okay. So I obviously prefer ChatGPT. BARD is um uh, it's it's very similar, but it has less, I think it's one number here. Model consisting 137 billion parameters, whereas ChatGPT has one billion. So there's just a lot more information that you can use of ChatGPT. Um, and BART is just kind of like a powerful search engine as well. And then for Bing is irrelevant if I don't think. All right. So cautions for chat GPT. There are tons of uh, cautions before you use anything, something especially as powerful as AI. Like most things, it can get hacked, right? So you want to be careful about what information or trade secrets you're putting in there. I advise you that you don't, right? Uh, data storage. Uh, the reason why I like ChatGPT is that it gives you the option to opt out, or I think it auto they change it to it's automatically opt out. You have to collect and save your data. But the other platforms will use the data to, yes, improve their language model, but they also use it to sell to third party sellers. So I like ChatGPT because they don't, as of yet, sell it to third party uh, folks, and you can opt out from them saving your data to improve their language model. So, that's that's your decision to make. There are a lot of other limitations, but let's get to kind of what it can do first. So we're going back to this list, and you're like, okay, we're seeing this, and we've interacted with ChatGPT, but how does it actually work? Well, it's simple. One, you open the chat box, you input data or input text. The actual program analyzes what you're saying, what you need, what you want. It generates a response. And then you can actually interact with it like you're having a conversation to say, can you how to make it better or how to improve their response. So at the end of the day, it's really about the, the prompt. OK, and it, the important thing about the prompt is that it needs to be clear. It has to have focus and it needs to be relevant. All right. So here's an example. Thinking about clarity think about clarity. So you can ask it, can you summarize this article? And if it's an article that was written, you know, the time it is limited to, it will give you kind of an automated thing. So if you summarize this article of financial.com, it'll say, well, uh, it talks the basics of small business loans, including how they work, the types of loans are available. Things that you probably would have gotten from the title of this article, right? It's not useful when you're like, wow, ChatGPT sucks. Why am I using this? What's the big that? Well, maybe the problem is you. So uh, affectionately, respectfully. Uh, so, so maybe try something like this. Can you provide the five most important points in this article as, as a bulleted, as a bullet point list? And then you include the link. And now you get something far more useful, right? You get something like, you know, small business loans are a form of financing. Uh, they can come in many forms, specifically SBA loans, lines of credit. Now you actually have some useful information that you can take away with for whatever this is. So you can see that just by changing your prompts, you can you can have a better reply than ChatGPT. Same, I want. And I know sometimes you're like, man, it's weird. It's helpful. Like when you talk to someone, you're like, man, give me five things. Like, wow, who am I to tell you that, right? Well, you can do that with ChatGPT. Channel all of that, you know, privilege there. So let's see. The other part, the other important part is actually telling it who it is. 
when you has anyone done this in the All right, this is going to change the answers that you receive. So when you are asking a marketing question, when you are asking in an HR question, instead of just asking the HR question or the marketing question, first tell it who it is. Say you are an expert marketing, um, you know, CMO of a company that has, you know, achieved three billion dollars in sponsorship or something like that, and then ask the question because otherwise they may give you an answer that maybe a college graduate would come up with or someone who's but an entry level person because it's it's taking all of the articles that it has access to. But now when you give it an actual prompt of the next level of expertise that you should do like 20 years, 30 years, because I want the greatest amount of wisdom, then it will give you a better, a better answer. So in this case, you're an expert CEO coach, you have helped entrepreneurs launch companies for 20 years. Your task is to provide the best advice when it comes to running companies. You must always clarify questions, ask clarifying questions. At a time before providing your answer. So this this the last sentence here is optional. You don't have to do that. Usually I don't, but you can include it there if you feel like you're not getting the answers that you need, or it's just not getting me. So tell it if you're confused, ask me questions. Are you following me? Yes. I say thank you to open. <laughs> <laughs> You, you won't mess it up. You won't mess it up. I say thank you to ChatGPT. That's fine. I'm going to say that one. Like, thank you, ChatGPT. <laughs> okay. Don't forget to be the one that takes on that. She was really nice to me. She was nice to me. So, okay. That's the tip I'll have to the five years. So, so, this is a, a great template to use. When you are using again, HR sometimes, and I'm a nonprofit executive, so I'll say you, you know, you are you know, executive for 30 years, now you've been sort of executive over in the US, uh, particularly in an incubator or in startups. What advice do you have for this? What would you do in this situation? And it would give me really great advice. All right, so here's an example. Of the reply, yes, I understand. As an expert CEO coach, my role is to provide the best advice for running companies. Before giving my answer, I will ask clarify. So it's confirming that I understood what they're saying. And then the person asked, my new burn rate is currently too high. Who can relate? What steps can I take to lower it? All right, thank you for your And it starts to add literally, well, what is your burn rate? What instead of me having to write it all, well, what is your burn rate? What are the main drivers of your burn rate? What steps have you already taken to lower net burn rate? Right? So that way it's also giving you uh answers that you haven't already thought of, but it's also informed. It goes back to, you know, if you don't prompt it right, it's not gonna be helpful. Do you understand what I mean here? There that's right. Right, that's right. Model, you know, just modeling who. Um, so there you go. And then the answer, well, my current is $20,000 per month. My largest expenditure is uh, marketing, which is 10K. And I've switched to more organic forms of marketing since then. And so it gives you, well, review marketing strategy, reduce overhead costs, and it gives some examples, utilities, rent, et cetera. Optimize your pricing strategy unnecessary expenses. Now, this is still somewhat general, right? You might want it even more specific. And in order to do that, you can start saying, well, here are my utility expenses. Here are my blah, blah, blah. Here's what my contract is. The more information you give it, the more specific answers it will be able to provide you. It might feel like the hassle to provide that, but I promise you it will be a better value response. All right. You can even do something as calendar help. And I'm going to tell you, this is a sample. We've gone all over the place. So I asked it once, you know, create a schedule that includes eight hours of work each day, but two hours that it happens 7 to 9 p.m. Because I said I tend to like really well during that time. Do not schedule work any earlier than 9.30 a.m. or between 5 and 7. So include one hour of lunch. And it does a whole breakdown of it. So if you're trying to manage your calendar, or trying to figure out how do I fit all being a founder, being a mom, being a sister, being a caretaker, it can even help you figure that out too. As long as you know 
your list can your list of requirements can be much higher. On Tuesdays, I want to be able to do this. On Thursdays, I want to be able to do this. You can even help me with that. And then also work is also about that one, right? So let's say you want to go to uh, your finally, I'm gonna go to your repo because I need a break from all this um, upright here. And so you can say, act as a travel agent, create me a seven day travel plan with two days in Puerto Rico and prioritize ways we can support the local economy. And it can do that. It could be a day one, day two, even thinking about when you actually go to the end. And so you can even say your budget and all those things, right? So it can even help you with those kinds of planning. Now, why do I include this? Is because sometimes on vacation, taking a vacation, especially as a founder, feels like another job. Because like, well, how am I going to get all these other things done? And I was like, I plan this trip. If I have kids, I got to plan the kids too. And so this is a way to just outsource a lot of these things to something else. This part is important too. Are you still with me? Okay. So we're going to go live. We're going to see, we're going to think about volunteer, someone who wants to play with chat GPT with me. All right, so what's a problem someone's trying to solve? Something that you want to ask chat GPT. Or do you want to come up here and type it yourself? I know. Or you can tell me. Okay. So I think um, one of the things that we need to work on for our deck is like building out uh, like a three to five year projection. And I want to know, like, what, like, where should I even start? Because we're just working on our actuary model. So, like, yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to try to type all of that out. <laughs> That's a long time. But, but I, I think I get it, right? So. That's just, okay. Uh, I don't have it here. I'm going to try to see from here. Okay, so uh, I'm really, actually, you are a serial uh, um, founder. Um, I'm going to make some busy because I'm typing here. And I'm not so, yeah. so, a serial founder with multiple, are you on a venture track? You want to like raise investment dollars and to raise investment dollars yeah so multiple multiple exits are now starting and so your question was that and typically what you would do is say i am meg start of this time and this is the bar so just to give a little bit of context mm -hmm. but and this is like thinking what a business model is and where we're at but just for the sake of this you know i'm trying to um develop revenue projections for this pitch competition uprise where do we want to start Okay. So what does it say? All right. Creating a revenue projections for a pitch competition like Upprise is essential part. Blah blah blah. Here's a step by step guide on how to develop revenue projections for your pitch. Start clearly defining your business model, right? Pressing strategy. What is your charge? And so let's say, for example, when you're reading this, like, yeah. We haven't set up on our business model, we're thinking about this with this. Then you can say, okay, well, first, when we talk about understanding your business model section, we're deciding between this business model and this business model. What are some considerations that you should be uh, thinking about? Or what are some points I should be thinking about in order to consider one or the other? So you start like literally have a friend here actually talking about right? Mm -hmm. uh, price is trying to what will you charge? Right? So it's trying to identify. Is this a it's a start, right? Say, okay, is your revenue model going to be based on SAS revenue is this an annual contract that you're going to be with an alternative contract? So, once you understand that, what is the actual pricing? 
What are the sales channel? So is it direct online and all of those impacts are of that projection? And so what you can do is if you are able to find the answers to these questions, right? You put it in here and you say, okay, here are all the answers. Help me now with the numbers with this timeline of what are next, what are assuming we'll land five customers in the place. What are the projections that you'll be able to at least spit out? You'll have to use your judgment if you think that it's reasonable and you go, can you be more conservative and keep being aggressive? And it'll start to begin. Um, I think it's more important, kind of what it's pointing out to you here, is the actual business model, your market research, what are your these components? Um, then the like that I showed last week, remember the green and the red? That's the that graph is less important than actually being able to speak to these items in the presentation, mm. which I'm glad it pointed out the that they want to know what your actual sales, especially for the BMI melon. You want to know what your sales funnel is gonna be. Um Revenue projection is projected. So it's actually even ordering it in the level of that I think you'll be ready to answer <laughs> based on building upon everything possible. So thank you. Yeah. You want to do a different example? Be marketing, be sales, sale, it could be a naming, something. Contracts. So let me ask you that. Uh, I have created some contracts that are not serious, like sponsorship contracts or small things with it. Uh, but I wouldn't do like a, I wouldn't do maybe like a co-founder. It could, it could, it will produce it. It will. Uh, I mean, you put something in front of someone, you write it, you know, both people sign, it's, it's a contract. It's right. Uh, but I recommend always start to uh with this if possible so it, it really depends um it might be like a liability yeah yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't do it unless it's something like you're providing i don't know food for a event next week and we don't have to do but not for um say us uh hire a sales contractor actually i have created it's your risk all of this is a risk is your risk to decide? I would advise against it, but also depend on case by case basis. Can chat GPT will tell them they're Yes, yes. It says that the bottom. I can use the for consulting on the same thing. Say, like, at my own resident stage, I have all the processes that I would do to make sure they're in the public. And then I can use another point that I did not do on stairs type thing. And I had it will sound like so. I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I, I have drafted a contract and sent it to my lawyer and say, What am I missing here? We even uh, uh, an intern that was under the age of 18, and we, I just asked, like, What are some considerations? For Things that we need to look up to ensure that we meet this correctly, and then we still talk to our career after that to make sure. So, the Lars was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he added a couple things and worried it up a little bit, but it was pretty good. Can we ask them the yeah. next question? Yeah, you can ask them this question. Um, yeah, let's get how to kill with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Or, or like um, design a garden schedule for year round in Pittsburgh. Okay, so <laughs> these are current questions on my mind. Like how to get some plants to survive. I'm gonna say, well, it depends on. It depends on what plants you have. Uh, what's your setup? Whatever. I think it's to suggest some plants to to keep alive. Oh, you want to suggest plants? Yeah, like, I don't know okay. what I can use. Uh, okay. I did the tomato thing. You just learned a... What do people talk about? Oh, it's it's or it's or it's it's you don't have to spell that. You, have, you are a master. Okay. <laughs> um, you literally can eat anything you want. However, I do not. What are some great 
plants for a beginner to start with in his Explain why you made these choices. And it might be typically I would start a new chat in order so it doesn't think it's still listening to you. But it says, all right. Oh, did it add pollution? Certainly, we're going to look at certain systems in Garden Pittsburgh. It's essentially cheap plants that are well suited for local climate. Uh, here are some great plant choices for beginners. So it says, hope the host is incredibly hard and can thrive in Pittsburgh's climate. They're shade tolerance and just helpful. Fire minimally. And then um, I'll say, I will uh, first for plants create a pair schedule into table for that. And there we so we may tell us you switch one, and maybe I'm gonna say like switch the call and because I prefer that. And it doesn't stop. So, yeah, you can do anything. <laughs> Any other ones before we move forward? So, feel free to use it. This is also a really great tool. Uh, last time I did this live, we had this woman who uh, was like, you know, I post on social media for, I post on social media for my, so she was selling, I think, necklaces. And I just don't seem to like get clicks. I don't know, and I and it's like, what are you at sage? Yeah, just so no, well, you gotta appeal to or what's the text? And it was her voice, but that's not who's actually buying who she is that's represent the demographic of who's buying her. And so I said, all right, well, let's put it. Jed Zier, who loves you know cute cat things, about blah blah blah, create a Facebook post to advertise. And it was able to say it in kind of like a Gen Z to Gen Z right away. So if you give it enough information about who your customer is, say I want, you know, a 30 word, you can be a 30 word, a 10 word, uh, or just a general post. And uh, and I usually like to do the goal, the, the covert, you know, goal is this, the overt goal is this. I usually would say, well, I want them that after they read this to stay, it'll incorporate the message to help encourage people to take that action too. So in anything that you do, you always have to ask yourself, what what's the action of what am I trying to achieve? So include that as a chance of achieving. Yes, Mark. Okay. <laughs> I think if you copy and paste it to Excel, it does. I've done it. Uh but I'm, yeah, I mean it also they did improve the copy and paste uh sophistication too. So it should work. Yes. Actually, yeah, yeah, I did it for project management. On, on the machines. Uh, uh, all right. All right. So let's get back to the presentation. So just you see, it's very simple. It's fast, and it's just learning how to play with it. And you saw that it gave the initial responses, and I gave it feedback. So it's a column in rows. I could have said please. Uh, until next time. All right. Okay. So here's some more examples. I told you it's going to be example heavy. So I can even say organizing info. So let's say if goals for the next quarter are due on the 15th of the last month of each quarter, what are the 2023 to 2022 deadlines? If you're working with the team or even with yourself. You don't want to create the table. You don't want to do that. Here it is. And then can you, can you uh, put this in a table format and show the deadline in a column and for what quarter it is for in another column? And it's certainly, and it puts the deadline in the quarter. You can do this for three years from now. You can do it just organizing information. You just text it to it, and it will organize it for you or do that math for you. You can even say, all right, you know, if we're paying someone and the pay increases, you know, 3% per quarter, what are the new, you know, payment amounts? And you can add that to the contract if that's a contract that you're working with. So that you can use chat to the team to do that math. You can even do it for brainstorming. So uh you can say we going back to the kind of burning uh how to reduce your burn rate example 
Here we mentioned, well, here are the things that I identified as options to reduce my burn rate. You know, reduce price for our product features, acquire more organic ways of marketing, make our products premium, do par uh, partnerships to increase distribution, et cetera, et cetera. Can you provide additional ideas for suggest potential gaps that I miss? And ChatGPT will be able to read, okay, well, I'm not going to suggest the top ones. I'm going to write some other ones. So increase the number of integrations with your apps. Oh, I think this was actually not for burn rating. This was trying to increase operations and increase the success of your company. Um, offer a uh, referral program to incentivize current users, develop a mobile app version of a product to cater to users. So you can brainstorm and say, this is what I've already thought of. What am I not considering? Or what do you think a mom would prefer? What do you think that a, a child would prefer? So you can do that as well. You can even do a marketing campaign. So for our BitFit app, an app that pays you Bitcoin to stay fit, can you help me improve the messaging and tone of our product? marketing campaign targeted towards an audience that is non-technical, young, not fit, and do not have a lot of money. See why you need to know who your customer is? Suggest so some catchy one-liners to use for marketing campaigns. And of course, I would have added here, you know, you're a marketing person with X amount of experience with these types of apps or internationally or in the U.S. or Pittsburgh, keep it specific, because maybe the one-liners will be uh, location specific too, but it says get fit, get paid in Bitcoin with BitFit app. Invest in your health and your wallet with BitFit app. Sweat your way to financial freedom. And so it can add, uh, it'll have different options, but you might say, well, I want it to be more cheeky. I want it to be more serious. I want it to be more fun. I want it in the voice of this, that, or the other. I didn't provide you. I sometimes say, give me 50 options. Give me 100 and we'll do it. Why not? Or I might say, you know what? I really like get rich while getting fit with fit, fit. Give me more ideas like that one. And it will continue. So again, it's a conversation. So uh, it'll also give you some suggestions of what to include. So in addition to, uh, to non-technical, et cetera, et cetera, budget conscious, uh, consider using language that is simple and easy to understand, highlighting the app's user-friendly interface. And so giving you actual strategy advice. Will it always be right? No, you have to, again, use your judgment. This is not a CEO, this is not a CEO. It's like we're done for the day. You can even do test tests. You can do LinkedIn copy, which I think you already know. So draft three sample messages for LinkedIn outreach for BitFit with the following value proposition, and it says it, and it will include it. I'll, I'll be honest, I never like the LinkedIn copy that uh, ChatGPT provides me, but I also have like my personal style, so it really depends. I also haven't, is it really loud? Too loud, okay. Um, I also haven't given it proper prompting, you know, because in order to tell someone what to do, you need to know who you are, right? And uh, in terms of LinkedIn persona, I'm still working that out. Also, you can't put me in a box, so uh, I'm just kidding. But but still, a lot of people still use it. I still encourage you to still maneuver it and play with it because people can tell nowadays when you use ChatGPT on LinkedIn. And so this is a good place to just if you're stuck, if you don't know even where to start, it's a good place to start. All right, you can use it for go to market plan. LeBron. Assume that you're a CEO of a startup working on a B2B mental health platform. You have 2,000 positions and you have a functional So you're telling what you do, what stage you're at. And the next step is getting paying customers. Outline a brief go to market plan to get the first 100 paying customers. All right, and there it is. Identify target market. The company's headquartered in the USA with 100 plus employees, it's telling you location, employee size, uh, develop messaging and materials, create peer messaging, marketing, and you can. You can see this and say, can you actually outline a project plan for all of this? And with this kind of time, and it will further uh, provide greater explanation and actual project plan for each. Free trials, offer a free trial period to potential customers. Um, I was trying to get paid, get paid again. Uh, referral program, and then additional opportunities. But this will be general. This is obviously, we were just playing around with chat GPT. If you get it more information, it will or you can say, here's the customers we've already landed. How can I land more of these? Or how can I reduce the sales cycle of these kinds of contracts? Consumer journey was another example I gave. So can you outline with a, uh, what a consumer journey could look like? 
for this other app, please outline in a table format the key phrases, key touch points, and during each phase, one to two jobs to be done per phase and potential pays and gains per phase. So this is very a lot of direction, and it does it. Phase, awareness, consideration, conversion tells you the actual touch points, how to get the job done, learn about Thrively, potential pain, and then actual gain. So it, it can do that literally in seconds. All right, value proposition. I already mentioned this, so I won't go through it. So I wanted to kind of question. So, so uh, you can ask, let's go with Thrive by Renata. I'm looking to explore different potential value propositions. Please share 10 different with the maximum of 144 characters, which is great, right? Because you want to be brief in your value proposition. You can ask it to do 20, 30, or to expand it with. So just another example of how you can use it. Just some instructions. This is a new section I added to this presentation. I have a good friend and he is a CFO of a company, uh, actually no, CPO of a company. And uh, this is actually a new thing. Okay, let me say ChatGPT is free, it's a premium model. You can pay twenty dollars a month. If you're using it every day. I think it is worthwhile. Uh, and one of the features that it unlocks is custom instructions. And this is pretty much you telling it once who you are, what your company is, who's important to you, uh, and all those things. And anytime you're asking it questions, it already has the context to be like, I have a partner, or I have a dog that I love, or I have a dog that I hate, and you know, exes or something. I don't know. So you can tell all that. So. Uh, Oh, here's kind of like a little bit of the introduction of, of what it asks. We customize your interactions with ChatGPT by providing specific details and guidelines for your chat. So we're going to give you an So you can say, hello, Corey. I'm Liz Nel Cabrera, the CTO and co-founder of Hands Down, a customer AI platform designed for highly regulated industry. So it's saying, who am I, my um, role, the company, and then what, uh, what the company does what sector you're focusing on and where you're looking to go, I highly encourage you to say like where you're looking to go to because anything that it gives you advice on, we'll be thinking about what your next step would be desired to become or be. Uh, I lead our revenue and product development functions having recently transitioned to the internet. Like literally giving you, giving them a, a, a background. Uh, the co-founder CEO, oh sorry, recently transitioned engineering leadership to my co-founder and CEO, Rika Emei. As hands down grows and evolves, I'm transitioning back to sales and growth growth in the product as a function of revenue. So now you're sharing a little bit about you, and then you're saying, well, now you're my trusted AI. And it talks about your personality, the personality that you want your chat GPT to have. You want opinions, I want you to have a proactive approach, uh, and then that you're essentially my digital assistant. And you, these are the things that you're genuinely helping with uh, preparing board meeting slides, drafting, editing crucial emails, et cetera, et cetera. You can take it a little further than that. You can even say um, some additional context on hands down. These are the people you should know or that I'll likely mention. Daisha is my lovely wife. Rika is my co-founder and hands down CEO. Rocky is the director of operations. He's always in the loop. Jason, revenue product, he's been awesome. He's helped us in the brink, we were on the brink a few years ago. And then lastly, my family, where they are and their names. So that way you don't have to say, well, Carmen, my sister, you just go Carmen. Like you're talking to someone who you know, kind of creepy, but useful. You can go further about what you want it to be like. So personality, this is just how my friend uh, decided to, to, you don't have to do it this way, but uh, she's a coder and that's just how she talks. So Cartridge, Corey, that's going to be your name. Bob, friendly, casual, opinionated, funny, warm, speech. I want you to be concise, enthusiastic, not too much. Text message style, do not start writing really long paragraphs unless you specifically engage your task. Judging the tends to do that, you can decide if you don't want that. And then even down to emoji, this, you can tell my friend is very particular. Uh, background and then instruction of how you want to interact. So anything that's really important to you. And you can add, uh, remove as much as you want. And chat GPT, once you pay for it, does give you prompts to, to help you break this out. But that's just what um, they use. All right. So, of course, we talked a lot about what it can do, ChatGPT, but we have to understand the limitations as we interact with this really powerful tool. There's an article that I pulled out. Uh, I know they started with but, but when Samsung employees chat GPT, use ChatGPT to check their code, they inadvertently reveal trade secrets. 
So you can use ChatGPT to uh, review your code as well. Really, really useful, but you also have to understand that you're giving the information uh, to a platform. Now you want to look into ChatGPT specifically. If you opt out, really, what is the extent of that data storage before you put anything that might be time sensitive? So something like code that you wouldn't want someone else to know. It's not to say that ChatGPT folks are out here taking your code, but if it's hacked, right? So check the privacy settings and continuously check it because things change. Uh, and, and this is true. I mean, Facebook has our information, Instagram has information, everyone has our information. You just have to decide. But Gmail has our information. Uh, so just you have to decide what you feel comfortable with. I won't go through all these limitations, but obviously, uh, it's a bot. It is not a human. It may provide nonsense, nonsensical information. There's been times where I asked it to do a certain uh, kind of calendar timing or a calculation and it got it wrong. Or I asked it to look at the word count for something and it got it wrong. Uh, usually it doesn't, but it does happen. So just know that it might not always be right. It's uh, the cutoff now is September 2021 for ChatGPT. It does have biases and limited it to. Uh, it can be verbose, repetition, you know, it could be ambiguous, and the reliability of the source is also an issue. So I've even, for those of you, a lot of you might know Scott McTaggart, if you look him up on uh, ChatGPT, you know, I'll say things that are true and things that are false about him, right? But it's, it's pointing to the Scott and Pittsburgh, but it's saying things and awards that he won that he definitely did. And so you have to know that it might not be right. You always want to double check your facts. Maybe next time we'll provide a screenshot out of it. Uh, other things is uh, personal information cannot handle protective sense of data. I mentioned that. No emotional understanding. However, um, I have used it for communicating, either learning how to communicate with people or having friends who was having some relationship issues and didn't know how to bring certain things up to his girlfriend. And I kind of explained the situation to ChatGPT and I, of course, changed the names. And it provided really great feedback. They use that information and they're doing very well. Uh, and so you just, again, you read it, you use the judgment. It is scary that it's able to do that, but I think sometimes we become so emotional, maybe a chat box is helpful to remind us of let's, let's go through this input logic. So that's at least my personal experience. And then um, certain biases is always, this is collecting, this is using one trillion piece of information on the internet, and you know the internet is a scary and often incorrect place that perpetuates whether it's sticky tax or incorrect information. And so you need to understand that ChatGPT is pulling from these things. So far, I haven't seen, haven't asked it anything that would that I've received a terrible response from. But I don't know what you might be using it for. But just know that that might be a possibility because this is the world that we live in. Uh, and then that's what I have for biases and limitations. Any questions on that? Okay. So next steps. The main homework that I have for you is to play around with ChatGPT. You will get better at it, and it will be super useful. It will save you so much time. I I um I have an LLC on the side, and I obviously take on clients. I've written the scope of work in like fifteen minutes. It was incredible. Uh, and it gave a whole project plan when it guessed that I should be charging the person uh, based on how many hours they think it would take me and where the outcomes I did. This. And it was like a, like a 10 plus page thing. So it was incredible. So it's very, very useful to save you some time. I'm sure that since I've found this resource, there are even better ones on YouTube videos, depending on your preference. But this is where I started the Art of Chat GPT. This is a free uh, resource that you can access. You can download it. Uh, you can download it. And it tells you just learning how to actually create effective prompts. I use it a lot to develop this presentation. And then I also really like this um, 20 chat GPT use cases for innovators. This is where I brought some of the screenshots as well from today and all of them. And they have, it was 20. Uh, the link, I'll have it, uh, if you switch it, we'll find it. But I'll include it in the follow up email to introduce the share out with you as well. But all you have to look up is example prompts for startup founders or best prompts for startup founders. Literally just search it. Not somewhere, I just know how to search. All right. Also look at other tools that are using AI technology. This is too small for you to really appreciate yet, but there's tons and tons and tons and tons. Uh, 
back in the community, whether it's for sales, for code generation, for AI items, for I use Honor AI to transcribe my meetings, and that's really useful for me. So I can take notes. Uh, Firefly is thought AI is very, uh, very popular. And Amber from Bias uses it. Uh, but they're even industry specific ones. So you want to make sure you do your research, always check the privacy settings. Uh, and then they're even Canva, you know, it's also using AI, right? It can even uh, edit videos automatically for you and for, you know, edit some marketing items automatically or make suggestions. So we'll get to that. So look at what tools you already have and see if they have an AI component. Yes. Otter.ai. So Otter is the end. And then Fireflies.ai is the other one. There's another one called Read.ai. It really depends on what you prefer. I only pick Otter.ai because I know something very particular who uses that. Like, well, if it's good, or it's good for me. Um, and basically, all of these are free to a certain amount. We'll cover this in a minutes month. So you just have to decide what you prefer. I tried Firefly. Uh, the, the, the site about Fireflies.ai is that it provides me summary who talked the most is being but I felt like the, the, the summary of the meetings weren't as accurate as useful for my meetings, and maybe that has something to say about me than the actual platform. But so I just went with Honor.ai. It integrates with Zoom. You can have it in your phone, you can have it out to. Uh, I usually ask, hey, is it okay for me to transcribe this? It's a particularly sensitive, but I really like it. But you can look up just AI tools uh, or startup toolkits, AI, and just see how you can optimize things like that here. They also have a lot of um, new AI components to it, and we have a lot of new AI components to it, and we have a lot of new But listen, we're smarter, not hard. Use these tools, but because you're a small team, either a one, a few, or very little. So leverage these items the best you can uh, to. Yeah, be able to do bigger things than your small team. Okay, so really, I wanted to know if there are any other AI tools that people are currently using. Yeah. Tell me, tell us how to use or give us some specific examples. And Emails, you know the you, you know the you know your intention, but you are not sure that you nailed it. So you 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 rest uh, you highlight uh, the status of the marketplace, and it feels like a little bit like the Gmail because it it starts with providing uh, options for the same. Same sentence, uh, but with different wording and different structure. And then, as you roll it down, it provides you uh, sentences that are somewhat like your sentence, but uh, providing different uh, uh, intentions. And in many cases, when I use this, I'm saying, ah, it's not just the wording, I was going to say something a bit, a bit different. And it's, it's a premium model. They, they, you to use this 10 times a day um, for uh, you need a tool if you open the 10 times then it stops uh, giving you unless you unless you subscribe and this for me for for every once in a while or if you have a, a very sentence you want to put it down you just you just have uh, uh, you know it's one and you like music, this is this is an Israeli company called So the guy who invented Google, the system that detects stocks and cars. So the same, the same brilliant mind that invented Mobitai and maybe the biggest exit ever in Israel, which was something I think like 16 billion dollars. Uh, 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 so he started this company and he didn't just finance it. He spent his time in the company. He really liked it. They have other models, but this is like a, a dedicated model to deal with this specific. Uh, Anyone else? 
Any other tools people are using? I use Grammarly for, I don't know, grammar, so that's not yet, but I do use Grammarly. And AI tools for developing for project management, but we really like to use Notion. Um, I don't know if anyone here has heard of it, but um, yeah, it's nice if it has tasks and subtasks and again, some of the notes for you. There's a little bit of a learning curve learning how to use it, um, but with the support of my tech team, I have a great learning group and now I love it. Um, so if anyone's looking for like ways to streamline tasks for the team, you know, I think one of people send an email online and the deadlines come up. It's kind of like Monday or like, I know there's some problems out there with the task management, but um, yeah, we tried a couple of them. Yeah. Notion, yes. And then it comes to videos of different ways you can set it up. People will have templates that would just have it already set up for you so you don't have to start from scratch. But you're right, there's a learning curve. But once you have the system, it's really, I use Notion myself. Yeah, very good. And they have some AI components too that I haven't really played around with yet. But it's play around with the wall of magic. Right. Yes, I, I wanted to actually, but no, 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 I wanted to ask you a question because who knows drawer? Okay, can you introduce yourself and, and I want you to provide any insights given that you're you know, AI ethics person. If you want, Yeah, first of all, if you remember the time about this is a slug It's a video where you see a smart and then ORGMEDAL.ORGMEDAL.ORGMEDAL.ORGMEDAL.ORGMEDAL.ORGMEDAL.ORGMEDAL.ORGMEDAL.ORGMEDAL.ORGMEDAL.ORGMEDAL.